Enlevez, s'il vous plaît, les panneaux. Please, can you take down those placards? Thank you very much. It's not permitted by the rules of the Der Ratifizierungsprozess muss uneingeschränkt fortgeführt werden. Unser Ziel bleibt es, den Vertrag von Lissabon bis zu den Wahlen zum Europäischen Parlament im Juni 2009 in Kraft zu setzen. Diese Grundsätze werden in response to the historic and some would say joyous expression of democratic will in Ireland last week, uh, you said yesterday from the chair that it remains our goal to see the Lisbon Treaty enter into force before the elections of next year, provided, provided, provided that you agree to this. I shall resolutely defend these principles in the Council at the end of the week. So you've asked us for a mandate. I would suggest to the House that simply having the mandate of the Conference of Presidents is not enough for this, and that we ought under Rule 103, which clearly says that Parliament shall decide whether or not to wind up the debate with a resolution, to finish our debate tomorrow with President Barroso with a vote to see whether we should give you that mandate or not, and to see whether members of this so-called democratic chamber are prepared to respect the Irish result and to find out whether no really means no. Thank you. abgestimmt. Die Abstimmung ist geschlossen. 129 dafür, 499 dagegen, abgelehnt. The ratification process is made up of 27 national processes. 18 member states have already approved the treaty. And the European Commission believes that the remaining ratifications should continue to take their course. President, nobody else has said it, but I will. Well done, the Irish. And yet, before the official result was out, there was Mr Barroso holding a press conference in Brussels, looking as shifty and as dishonest as anybody I've ever seen, saying, despite what the rules of the club are, that the treaty is not dead and we continue. Frankly, it was a disgusting display. It was an insult to democracy. It's perfectly clear that the ratifications should stop now and the implementation of the treaty should stop now. Mit Ausnahme von Sinn Fein, über die ich jetzt hier kein Wort mehr verlieren will, haben alle irischen Parteien, alle, die EVP-Parteien, die Liberalen, unsere Partei, für ein Ja aufgerufen. Und die Bevölkerung hat mit Nein gestimmt. Das ist das Alarmsignal. Wir alle, auch wir hier in diesem Plenarsaal, sind davon betroffen, dass es eine Misstrauens-, eine Vertrauenskrise gibt. Eine Krise gegenüber den nationalen Institutionen des Vertrauens, gegenüber den nationalen Institutionen, gegenüber den supranationalen Institutionen. Und auf Ihren Beifall kann ich verzichten. Uh, the T-Shirt Party uh, up there, they have the text Respect the No. My idea of doing that is also to know the concerns of the Irish people. It is to understand why they voted no. Mrs. Wallström said this morning that it was important to find out why people had voted no. What had they been voting against, she asked. Let me help her with that. I suggest that they were voting against the Lisbon Treaty. The giveaway was the ballot paper which asked whether they wanted to approve the Lisbon Treaty. As I said last week, the Commission fully respects the outcome of the Irish referendum. We must show the same respect for all national ratifications, whether they have chosen to take the route of referendum or of parliamentary ratification. And then Mr. Cohn Bendit said it would be quite wrong to have one million people deciding the fate of half a billion Europeans. Well, I'm happy to agree with that. Give the half billion their referendums to Pactio Olisipiensis Sensendias. Thank you. Don't forget, the European leaders have invested a lot of political capital into this whole procedure. While it is clear that the Lisbon Treaty cannot enter into force before unanimity about its ratification, 
it is also clear that an irish vote decides on the irish position but cannot determine the position of other countries. i used to think after the french and dutch results that you were in denial but now i realise that what is behind this is a new phenomenon. it is eu nationalism and it is the most dangerous political phenomenon to have swept europe since. one thousand nine hundred and forty five you ignore the voters you are destroying democracy and you have shown that you will stop at nothing. i hope that we will not be demoralised by this and will keep our line. what we need is of course sailors and navigators for fair weather but also for difficult times. i believe we should keep the cap and go on with our project so that europe is more necessary than ever. well ask yourself why are the politicians why is this class now unpopular? well later on today mr barroso this house will be voting for a new justice commissioner and it's likely that a former convicted fraudster will after today be the justice commissioner for the european union. og alligevel hører man kommissionens formand sige at ratifikationen skal fortsætte. Man taler om, at et lands skepsis ikke kan bremse udviklingen. Man søger at fremlægge det, som om, at det irske folk har et problem. Men det har de ikke. Kløften er ikke mellem det irske folk og Europa. Kløften er mellem Europas folk og Europas statsledere. Kløften er ikke mellem nogen lande og resten af Europa. Frankrig, Holland og Irland ønsker ikke at bremse udviklingen. De ønsker en anden udvikling. Så fat det dog. There has been a great deal of disparagement of my country since Friday. It is as if you feel insulted. If the response to the democratic will of the people that I've heard in the last five days is outrage, then there's something wrong. Make no mistake, Ireland is pro-European. We believe, as, as obviously you do not, that the project has lost its way. It has lost sight of the one thing it needs most, democracy. Es wird sich ein Ausweg aus dieser Krise finden. Bestimmt. Auf irgendeine Art und Weise werden wir mit Sicherheit auch die Iren wieder an Bord holen. Aber das wird uns nicht helfen. Was wir brauchen ist die Erkenntnis, es gab einmal eine Zeit. Da hatte die pro-europäische Bewegung eine Seele. Heute hat Anti-Europa eine Seele. Our problem must not be to discuss the speed at which the EU should now move. It should be to discuss its direction. Listen to the people and they will tell you. If the ratification process continues, it will show that EU leaders have learnt nothing and that politicians still believe they know best and that it is the people who are wrong. By definition, the people are always right. It is called democracy. We want an EU which is people-centered and which delivers that democracy. So we must not ignore the Irish vote, we should build upon it. The ratification process should stop, the listening to the people should begin. No, 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 can I say, this is not democracy what you said, sir. Democracy is to say, we respect the Irish as we respect every other member state's decisions. Let's continue the process. This is what we have to continue today. And that is also why the Commission, of course, will continue with what we started uh, now a couple of years ago, called Plan D, as in debate, dialogue and democracy. Is threatening a country for being democratic an action of democracy? I can tell you that this soul, you see how mobile they are. They are running in Ireland. Die haben die Treppen gestiegen, die haben an den Haustüren geklingelt, die haben ihre Traktate verteilt, die waren überall. Wo waren die Pro-Europäer? Wo ist die Bewegung, die für die europäische Einigung kämpft? Wo ist die Leidenschaft, die wir mal hatten? Die Leidenschaft, die ist heute auf der anderen Seite. Bei denen, die Europa schlecht reden von rechts. Bei denen, die Europa schlecht reden, weil sie Angst haben. Aber die Mischung aus sozialem Abstieg und Angst war doch immer in Europa das Einfallstor für den Faschismus. Es wurde der Vertrag inhaltlich diskutiert in Irland, insbesondere die neoliberale Festlegung, Militarisierung und vor allem der undemokratische Charakter. Ich glaube, was notwendig ist, ist, dass das einfach akzeptiert wird, dieses Votum. Der Vertrag ist tot und es bedarf eines anderen Vertrages. Und wir werden die Reihe von undemokratischen Äußerungen, die hier stattgefunden haben, durchaus auch zur Kenntnis nehmen und dokumentieren. Vielen Dank. Und Sie, Herr Schulz, 
Skam dem, Herr Schulz. De sammenligner såkaldte anti-europæer med fascister. Men det er deres retorik, der er fascistisk. Skam dem. Shame on you. Shame them. Sometimes I like to compare the European Union as a creation to the organization of empires. The empires. <laughs>